I recently had the misfortune of coming across the Instagram creator known as Queen Awake with a peachy pastel aesthetic that felt dated at the end of 2016 and a social political perspective that felt dated at the end of the 1600s. If you thought that Queen Awake's username was ill-conceived and hard to grasp, then just wait until you hear her anti-trans theory on how Hollywood is controlled by an occult religious group that is supposedly tricking us with celebrities who identify as cisgender but are secretly trans, or as she calls them, quote unquote, inverted. Why would they do this? Well, according to her, it's so that straight, God-loving Americans are tricked into having gay thoughts. And also to create gender confusion in today's youth. All because, as she puts it, the devil is a master of deception. Which I guess is how we know that the devil is not her lash technician or injectionist or hair colorist. Because, mama, they are not trying to fool anyone. At the risk of providing any more attention to this individual and her problematic messaging, I felt compelled to shine a light on the even more bewildering lack of response from Instagram when it comes to preventing Queen Awake or any of her followers from boldly spewing hate speech and even inciting violence against protected minority groups on the Instagram platform. I'm also making this video to hopefully prevent even more people from feeling convinced by this creator's false and scientifically baseless misinformation and ultimately stop her from converting any more Americans into radicalized gender police who are so committed to the Christian ideals of unconditional love and universal acceptance that it eventually justifies them in their acts of unmitigated hate and universal exclusivity. So grab your crucifix and at least three items of gender compliant clothing as we face off with one of the fallen angels of Instagram to look for the secret within certain celebrity skeletons, find out the appropriate pronunciation for Hollywood, and catch the most toxic Instagrammer with the least catchy Instagram handle who you would never want to meet outside of a family-friendly drag event for another covertly satanic installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web, and we break it down like the and nutso beliefs of a crazy religious fanatic and look at each individual clip so we can decide, oh yeah, I see your point because I've been huffing paint or oh no, this woman needs to get on psychiatric medication and I'm not afraid to tell her. This is a video that as my creation process went on left me feeling conflicted because as an internet commentator, oh, I love to talk about that's bonkers. But on the other hand, I also like not hyper platforming people who don't even deserve to be known by the 44,000 Instagram followers that they currently have. I'm pretty sure Queen Awake, who we're talking about today, was banned from TikTok, but of course, Zuckerberg is all about freedom of speech as long as it comes to the conservative right inciting hate against people of color or anybody from a protected minority group. But then if I comment saying that you're a dumb bitch, I get fucking scolded by a little pop-up saying this might be bullying. You know what else might be bullying? Everything that comes out of this woman's mouth. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That way I know you want to see even more clip breakdowns on the radical right extremists like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications. And you'll always be the first one to know when I'm serving the truth to someone who thinks they know the truth based on some old book that their grandfather taught them to love. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive episodes, watch parties, a lot of good stuff. So if you're not here to leave a hate comment about what a gay f I am, then uh, you might wanna check that out. But who knows? Who f knows at this point? I might seem worked up, but it's because every word that comes out of Queen Awake's mouth makes me sick. I was alerted to this user from a tweet who pointed out the clearly misogynistic roots of everything that this person is spewing. And I was inspired by my passion for revolting against the disgusting state legislator across this country that is preventing gender affirming healthcare for individuals and especially minors, unequal access to 
medical healthcare, so American, so American. Also things like the don't say gay laws that DeSantis is pushing and passing in Florida. We are truly on the verge of living in a state where it is not okay to be LGBTQIA+, which is why I believe Meta and what's his f***ing Zuckerberg and all of those who work for Instagram allow stuff like this to happen. Twitter, ever since f***ing Elon Musty got in control of it and decided that, oh, anti-trans rhetoric doesn't count as hate speech, that website is overrun with transphobes saying the most vile things to trans people that like, if you said something equally as repulsive to a person of color or to a Jewish person or just a regular gay person, they would be banned within a minute of their lives. And it's bad enough for somebody to be openly transphobic on Instagram, obviously. But to base that transphobia in not only their strict Christian views, but also this woo-woo idea of the satanic cult of child abusers that run Hollywood all being trans, that's the kind of shit that we don't need in a world where people will be assaulted for using the bathroom according to their gender identity or according to their actual sex assigned at birth just because somebody makes the decision because of this person's teachings that, oh, the, I, I looked at your clavicle bone and decided you have to be secretly transgender. It just paints this picture of very normal, healthy, and trying to be happy transgender people as though they're deceptive child abusers, sex offenders when mama. Statistically, it is cisgender straight men who are most often accused of that crime and convicted guilty. So what are we doing here? You tell me after we check in with Queen Awake and she will uh, give us a little introduction about who she is. Hi, I'm Queen Awake. If you don't already know me, I expose inverted celebrities in Hollyweird. I help critical thinkers read skeletal markers. I share comparisons of openly trans individuals to these inverted celebrities in Hollyweird. Make sure to give me a follow if you're interested in learning how to identify these skeletal markers. Uh, hi, Queen Awake. Thanks so much. And you be sure to give me a follow if you're interested in identifying when your f***ing false eyelashes aren't glued on properly. I'm not saying you need to worship the devilish master of deception, but maybe you can at least crack open that book of the damned to figure out what brand of glue he uses when he's trying to prevent the inner corners from looking like the only part of your life that's raptured up into the heavens. Those strips are lifted like they're the saintly god of your cisgender worldview. I love it when influencers with 40,000 followers are like, if you don't already know who I am, well, bitch, I don't. I don't know who you are. You're not f Beyonce. You're also not very notable or interesting. In fact, outside of your relatively small online following, the only people who know of you are those who spent their childhood also locked inside of a hot church, being brainwashed by a transphobic, misogynistic priest who wanted the entire congregation to think that it was Hollywood being overrun by child predators in order to distract from the fact that it's actually he and his clergymen who were actually complicit in a widespread network of cover-ups and lies orchestrated by US Christian groups in order to stop justice on their known abuse of minors. All of which happened from right there within the same building that y'all had a bake sale to raise funds for the resegregation of public schools last year. You're not famous. You're just some asshole who was raised Assholes. This is one of those things that you first start watching it and it feels like it's really bad. And then by the end, it still feels really bad. We love the consistency, at least. In fact, if you weren't able to decipher this from my upload schedule, I am someone who often has trouble with consistency. But no longer does that apply to my supplement routine. All thanks to Care Of, a brand that I am so grateful to have collaborated on this video with. If you didn't know, Care Of is a subscription service that ships high quality vitamins, minerals, and supplements, even nutritional powders to your door every month. It wasn't until I received care of and realized the convenience of opening up one of these personalized packets every day, the ease of taking my supplements plays a big role in how consistent I'm able to be. And of course, after months and months where I remember and enjoy taking my supplements every day, my skin feels more resilient 
in terms of dryness or flakiness or just healing after a breakout. All of that looks better to me. Care of uses astaxanthin that's sustainably harvested from Himalayan water-fed algae, and it has powerful antioxidant properties. It helps protect the skin against oxidative stress, which is one of the causes of premature aging. No thank you. Care of has this quiz on their website that helps you figure out which supplements, vitamins, and powders will help you reach your health goals. And now I feel even more motivated because in addition, you can also use the Care of app, which allows me to track my progress. Plus it rewards me with discounts and merch when I remember to take my supplements daily. Free stuff, y'all. And it's all sent to you in this adorable pack. It's personalized with your name on it, which for some reason just gives my pleasure center all it needs. Take care of's quiz and see what vitamins and supplements they recommend for you. Click on the link below and use code NickD50 for 50% off your first order with Care Of. Thank you once again to Care Of. Mwah, mwah, we love it. Oh, and we'll get into the fallacy of quote unquote transgender skeletal markers in just a moment. But first I wanna make fun of how Queen Wakey over here thinks it's an actual serve every time she says Hollywood is Holly weird. In fact, she actually thinks a lot of things are a serve when really it's just confusing crazy talk from another religious fanatic. This is how most people see Hollywood. This is how I see Hollywood. Once I looked into it, I found out what those symbols mean, but at first I was convinced she was just trying to tell us that she was illiterate. You might look at the page of a liberal newspaper and see a collection of letters and punctuations that make up sentences, but I see a confusing and frightening jumble of symbols and shapes that mean nothing since I've forgotten how to read ever since I fell asleep for two hours inside my garage with the car running. Yeah, sweetie, we know, cause you're a dumb and that was evident in every single line item on your schedule that day. What she's showing there are coded symbols that were apparently released in a CIA or FBI file that child predators would use to uh, kind of hint what kind of child they preferred. The worst part is there are plenty of let's believe that word, who harm children all throughout Hollywood. But the ones who have been proven, as in have victims speaking out against them or are convicted of their crimes, are almost always cisgender men, or in the case of Ghislaine Maxwell, cisgender women. Obviously, it's a huge problem that children in Hollywood are subjected to such unthinkable crimes while put in a position where they have to earn money for their families in an adult professional environment as basically unsupervised children. But how is Queen Awake gonna sit here and act like it isn't also a problem when the same amount, if not more children, are subjected to the same unthinkable crimes because of faith manipulation and religious leaders who take advantage of them? And then for not just Hollywood to be covering up those crimes, but a global legion of the Pope and his f***ing lackeys all talking sh and then we'll get into, I think, an even more pertinent level of prejudice demonstrated by Queen Awake and all of those who think like her, which has to do with gender skeletal markers, which is basically her way that she believes she's devised of looking at a person's physical features and determining whether they are secretly transgender or not. She uses this to try and quote, expose transgender celebrities that she calls inverted, as well as identify transgender people based on their appearance as they walk by her on the street. Not only does this obviously contribute to the really flawed thinking that transgender people are in some way trying to deceive others into thinking that they were assigned a certain gender at birth, but also that transgender people are automatically trying to pass as someone who is biologically assigned their gender identity at birth. Like, it's all gross. And she does this for pretty much any woman in Hollywood. Oh, but their conspiracy also is like, they had in plain sight, so Natalie Port man, Nicole Kid man. It's like, those are just the names that Anglo-Saxons gave to their immigrant ancestors when they couldn't pronounce Nicole Meningen, but whatever. Let's hear what you have to say. There's a difference in a masculine looking female and somebody who has male skeletal markers. Let me show you what I mean. This is supermodel Naomi Campbell. This face has all male skeletal markers. 
brow ridge, deep socketed eyes, can opener jaw, wide dental arch. But remember, you have to confirm with body. So let's go check out the body. Now, this is all confirmed with male skeletal structure in the body as well. Okay, we're shaped like an upside down triangle. We have the shoulders wider than the hips. Uh, there's a little bulge too, if you see that. Mm, I'm sorry, all I can see are those wet spots on your chest, presumably from when you were lapping up holy water out of a bowl on the ground like a dog. Also, that bulge is probably her vagina. Biological women don't have flat printer paper and inkjet Everybody's body is different. And also, there is such a thing as photographic illusions. Like, it's just some light and a sunny day on a beach and you're using that to act like Satan is in control of the Victoria's Secret models. As you can see, Queen Awake clearly feels that these quote unquote inverted celebrities are a real danger to society. And as she puts it, it's all because they are members of an occult religion that raised them as the opposite gender, speaking as though there is a binary. And this is all because this occult religion apparently worships a transgender god and they're witches and wizards who like try to worship this god. But also because the devil, as in the opposite of god, is sometimes just really into tricking people. It's not both, but it's sometimes either. Kind of hard to tell. She flips and flops depending on where her brain chemistry is that day. The idea behind who's in control of this occult religious group seems to change from video to video depending on what supports her point, although the what will never be evidence or data. As a counter argument, I believe that the real danger is influencers who wear specifically that hat. If you ever encounter a TikTok video with somebody wearing this wide brim Dr. Seuss sheriff's hat from the 2010s, it's the first clue that you need to scroll on because that person is either trying to recruit you as a preferred customer for their pyramid scheme shampoo brand or they are a outright bigot who can't wear the official clan hood because it draws too much attention to their cone head that everyone in their family seems to to have for some reason. I didn't say it's because they were inbred. It's just something we all collectively thought about them. But I don't say it out loud because unlike Queen Awake, I know that it's not cool to make assumptions about people based on the shape of their bones. Especially not when it will just lead to converting members of their online audience into the gender police who undoubtedly contribute to the disproportionately higher rates of harassment and violent crimes against trans people, specifically trans women and all women of color. This this idea of gender skeletal markers is completely biased and also completely debunked by actual science. And as you can imagine, also has firm roots in both misogyny and misogynoir, which is defined as the dislike of contempt for or ingrained prejudice against black women. We saw this with Michelle Obama, Omarosa, any black woman of note gets these horrific comparisons to animals or have having manly features that cannot be described as anything other than fucking racist drivel. And if Queen Awake really wants to make such widespread generalizations about people based on their appearance, I'm gonna sink to her level. You know I can get that petty. I've done it for much less. Learning skeletal markers can be kind of tricky at first. So I'm gonna let you know some things that I did to get really good at this. The first thing that I did was go to Bright Green Barbie and study what skeletal markers looked like. I went and studied openly trans people on their social media platforms and compared skeletal markers to that so that I could like train my eye to what it looks like when you are the opposite gender. Uh, I don't know. It kind of seems like you couldn't even train your eye to focus in the same direction as your other eye while recording this video. So how am I supposed to trust your special eye when it comes to identifying skeletal structures that tell you they're assigned a gender at birth. And also, once again, I have to ask, why does it even matter to you? By the way, I obviously mean no disrespect to any of the stunning icons out there with strabismus, also known as lazy eye. My point is just to give a Queen Awake here a taste of how stupid it sounds when somebody makes such pointless conclusions based on your appearance. And also, for the record, for years, the scientific community has agreed that the notion that people of any gender expression are born with an underlying sex 
demonstrates a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of biological sex in the first place. Let's take this quote from the 2018 scientific article entitled Skeletal Studies Show Sex, Like Gender, Exists Along a Spectrum by Alexandra Krolik, which states, quote, the perception of a hard and fast separation between the sexes started to disintegrate during the second wave of feminism in the 1970s and 1980s. In the decades that followed, we learned that about 1.7% of babies are born with intersex traits. That behavior and body shape and size overlap significantly between the sexes. And both men and women have the same circulating hormones. And there is nothing inherently female about the X chromosome. So there we have it. Science is telling us that human sex, as we like to assign at birth, just like gender identity, exists on a spectrum, which flies in the face of the anti-trans policies that are pushed by Republicans, like the ones in 2018 that were leaked in a memo to the New York Times, which showed that the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services was working to establish a legally binary definition of sex, establishing each person as, quote, male or female female based on immutable biological traits identifiable by or before birth. But they haven't been able to do it because that's not how it works, sister. And if you knew about genetics, that would be very clear. Take for example in the mid 1980s, Spanish Olympic hurdler Maria Jose Martinez Patino was kicked out of her Olympic residence and shunned by teammates, friends, and even her boyfriend when a chromosome text came back as XY instead of the expected XX that was considered quote unquote normal, she was stripped of her medals and her Olympic records, all because of a genetic mutation that she had, although she was externally female to the point where she was assigned female at birth. She wasn't particularly tall, they say. She normal average range weight and body shape for a assigned female at birth person. Essentially, her entire life was uprooted and destroyed and she was based to unfair prejudice, not that there's anything as fair prejudice, because of a genetic variant that was not proven to give her any competitive advantage in the sport of hurdling, which obviously is very closely linked to the same old argument we're having over 50 years later about trans women competing in sports or using the bathroom that's appropriate for the gender identity that they use. Also, like shut the f up, human bodies are constantly evolving. We know scientifically that AFAB and AMAB people have lower or higher levels of both estrogen or testosterone than we did a thousand years ago, which would obviously lead to a wide range of variances in the skeletal structure somebody has regardless of their biological sex. But Queen Half Awake over here has somehow determined that a person who's really assigned female at birth would never have have less than 15 of the 20 completely arbitrary skeletal markers that she believes would coincide with a biological female. First of all, that's not true. Second of all, to think that she could even instantly eyeball these measurements and these traits as you saw someone walking down the street is an extremely unscientific and biased way to help try to confirm her own prejudice. Confirmation bias, bigotry, anti-trans piece of have I made myself clear? And it can't be ignored how this woman is using her own white privilege and her ability to front as this cutesy, aesthetic, yet outdated Instagram influencer to try and help normalize these extremely hateful thoughts as something that people who aren't better educated or were maybe on the fence about the issue would easily lean into. If you read the comments on these videos, it's even more disgusting. People saying things about Naomi Campbell, like that's the type of man that if they deceived my son into going on a date with them, or if I saw them in a public restroom, they would have the wrong thing coming. It's like, you're just talking about hurting somebody for no reason, regardless of whether they're trans or not. You can't f***ing talk like that in this country. And I will make sure that you go to f***ing jail, Bethany. I am so sorry to trans people or just women in this country because it makes no f***ing sense that this kind of is allowed. No wonder there's widespread violence against women and trans women and people of color. This is the kind of that gets allowed on social media sites, yet like drag shows are f 
banned at pride parades at Wilton Manors in Florida now? But I guess Queen Awake here, in an attempt to put her money where her own stupid mouth is, she'll even point out the skeletal markers on her own body and the skeletal markers on her husband's body in what was probably one of her most inadvertently shady videos. Way to throw your man under the bus, sweetheart. Okay, I told you all that I was gonna do my husband today, so let's just dive into him. So he is shaped like literally an upside down pizza. I guess you could say that. Uh, or maybe like a thumb thumb from Spike kids. Mama, don't use this man as a subject talking about identifiable features of his skeleton when I'm not even sure that he has an identifiable skeleton. Forgive me for body shaming queen whatever and her f***ing husband, but what about her f body shaming women and then also shaming people for their identity regardless of the body that they're born in. She has no business doing that. If I saw her husband at a gay bar, I would let him f*** me. But if I found out he was married to some conservative dumb and therefore likely goes to the same stupid church she does, then it's war, baby. We can talk about your thumb thumb ass, doughy ass body, Pillsbury who butt. <laughs> Pillsbury who f her. You fuck Cindy Lou Who from the Who's. <laughs> I gotta stop. But that's, I, uh, clearly this is an important issue to me and I'm only making personal remarks about Queen Stupid and her hot husband under other circumstances because it highlights how childish and immature and unnecessary such a worldview is. Queen Awake is very pretty, but her views on the world make her rather horrid. Like she can't even talk about the people she likes in a way that's respectful. His limbs are longer. I mean, if I'm gonna be real here, like I make fun of him and tell him that he has T-Rex arms. So it's normal to have one or two of the opposite gender markers. However, all most of his gender markers are male and he's not in the occult. First of all, you sound like a great person to be married to. Maybe if you stopped making fun of his arm length, he would eventually give you your woman allowance so you could head to the salon and touch up those grown out roots. But I don't know, there might be plenty of other reasons why he doesn't like you. There are several videos in which QA addresses commenters who say, I wonder what you would say about me. I'm a AFAB cisgender woman and I have a square jaw and narrow hips. You would probably say that I'm secretly a man too. And she always follows it up with a similar explanation that like, no, that doesn't count. Because basically your body probably looks normal in enough other ways to cancel it out. And also you're not a member of the occult. But how does she know that about these people in her comments any more than she knows that about these people that she claims are in the occult in Holly Weird, simply based on the fact that they're actors or musical artists who have marketable skills and that don't get fired for misgendering their coworkers at an office job. It just goes to show how much a sycophant with a high level of verbal confidence and low level of gluing your lashes down might have, like they can have a strong and profound influence over the the way that people think. Even her small sphere of influence could create an entire family that thinks this way or that invalidates a trans or non-binary or queer child in that way. And that could lead to untold generational trauma that impacts the way we all have to suffer through this crazy dystopian world we live in. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. There are only two genders, God made man and woman. The enemy is the author of confusion, not God. There's no such thing as 50 million non-binary weird genders. That's not a thing. And I'm not gonna play into the delusion that there is. Get mad about it. This is a hill that I am willing to die on. Okay, go die then. Which hill was it? I'll help you find it, sis. In fact, I'll find the coordinates of that death hill on a map and you can flap those false eyelashes and fly us over there like Dumbo with his elephant ears. Also, no one ever said that there are 50 million non-binary weird genders. There are actually infinity non-binary weird genders. That's the whole point. It's a spectrum with no, no set points. Because once again, gender is a made up society idle construct invented by your puritanical pilgrim ancestors who tried their best to categorize people into easy to understand groups way back before scientists even knew what shape the fucking earth was. How are Christians gonna tell me that their religious beliefs are under attack just because other people's beliefs outside of that religion are being respected but have no real impact on the way that they live their daily lives. You can go to church and talk sh about everybody you know. And I'm not gonna say anything, but as soon as you start getting online and trying to convert people into literally committing hate crimes, 
That seems unconstitutional. In fact, despite the toddler-like tantrums that extreme Christians or the general right-wing conservatives throw every time the USA tries to take a step towards its supposed goal of progress and equality, the USA is not a Christian country, and that argument deserves no legal basis. If you believe that transgender identities or non-binary people are a sign that your country has been corrupted by the devil, then move to a country that strictly adheres to Christian law. Although then you might find out how it feels to be considered as a puppet of the devil simply because you dyed your hair and got married to Shrek. Well, guess what, mama? A lot of times you Shrek looking husbands out there who hate gays are secretly gay yourself. And when you come out of the closet, I once again will let you me. How's that, Queen Awake? You better queen go to f***ing bed. Do you guys remember that one time that Lady Gaga was on stage and the junk flops out? If not, I got you. Viewer discretion is advised. For your love of music. And I remember that my... Am I the only person that just saw that? Oh wait, you did too? Okay, good. I don't think there's really much to say after watching that. Mama, you don't have to say anything. Why don't you just rub a dryer sheet over those flyaways and call it a day? Oh, I'm sorry. Are those your uh, gender identifying antenna that Christian God only gives to his most fear-mongering members of his cockroach army? Sorry for making yet another appearance of based assumption, Queen Awakey Bakey Shaky Quakey. Once again, I'm just following your scientific method of using what I see to make baseless assertions about who you are and how that that who you are is subhuman. If you think that being Naomi Campbell means you're a secretly transgender puppet of Satan, then I think your thirsty, dry hair makes you an openly hateful muppet of the radical right. Do I really need to say anything else? Did anyone else see that? Yeah, we all saw it, dummy. You think that a uh, admitted instance of performance art makes Lady Gaga a devilish, satanic, intersex person, and I think that your inability to research that makes you a grease-eating cockroach that survives off of and that's a hill that I'm willing to die on, Burgerella. It's sad that you put mentor and conspiracy realist in your bio, yet you're unable to even remotely research the opposing arguments to any of your supposed proof. This video clip has been debunked by many journalists who have quoted Lady Gaga admitting to wearing a prosthetic penis at shows during this part of her f***ing career because journalists were uh, accusing her of being secretly a person with intersex traits. This was such a clearly staged moment where she unstrapped a fake penis that she admits was tied on to the front of her vagina, all to spark more questioning from interviewers who would ask her about it and she could say, what if I did have a penis? What does having a penis even matter to you? And what does it have to do with me calling myself a woman? Why are you so threatened by a woman with a penis? Why would anybody care what the genitalia of another person who is way too rich and cool to ever meet them or anybody in general has. The line of questioning that likely sparked the change in the minds of a lot of people who are now no longer making transphobic jokes or assertions in the media. Lady Gaga is smart and brave. Trans people are smart and brave when they come out and talk about who they are and try to fight against the stigma that idiots like you push. Like, why do you care? And don't tell me that it's because God called you to spread the word and protect society from Satan and the occult. Because people from your religion also say that the existence of God is something that can never be proven. Therefore, you can also not prove God ever called you to do anything or that Satan or the occult are real either. So in reality, what you're doing is just endangering your fellow humans by encouraging others to fear the trans community and ostracized and physically harassed and harmed and murdered. All because, I guess, of that unprovable God who supposedly loves everyone. Even if you really believed all of that, you couldn't 
wouldn't be so enlightened about God's message, but completely oblivious to the fact that this type of rhetoric, regardless, will justify dangerously unstable people to make assumptions about innocent people and then target them for violence. Why are you teaching people how to identify what you call an inverted celebrity for any other reason than to start another proverbial witch hunt against the trans community? And like, get people on alert for anybody who has any sort of gender non-conforming expression. Why associate trans people with evil or a satanic agenda if you're not hoping to motivate violent attacks against the people who concern you because they don't share your experience in life? Or maybe they do and you're just a afraid to relate to them. Queen Awake, you are sick, you are disgusting, and you need professional help to unentangle your transphobia and work through the way that you tie it in with your fanatical religious beliefs. Get a therapist, shut the f up, and fix your damn lashes. That's what's really sick about this anti-trans agenda is that people can be so convoluted and confused by their own religious upbringing that they truly think what they're doing is in some way a favor to humanity because they don't consider the people that they're targeting as members of humanity. That's so sad. Just a reminder today that Satan is a master deceiver. He is specifically trying to deceive Generation Z that they can be any gender that they want to be in their life. The sad part about that is, is that when you reject God's design for your life, you're also rejecting the blessings that he has for you. It's loving for me to tell people that they are being deceived by these stars. It's also loving for me to remind you what God says about idolizing people. They're listening to their father of lies and I am listening and being obedient to the one true God. And this is just another reminder today. And I hope that people can hear mine over the queen serpentine of the sender part that we've been meeting today. I especially want people to hear me who are afraid to be honest with others about who they are or are just now starting to come to terms with the identity that they want to express going forward, but might be too afraid. Whether or not God exists, you deserve to live a life full of love, happiness, peace, and freedom from persecution, like all humans. Humans do. If any person or group tells you that your feelings about who you are or who you love are all due to you being tricked by the devil, they are sorely mistaken. And they likely only believe that because they were brought up according to a dogmatic system of beliefs that prevented them from being who they truly wanted to be in some way. Maybe sexually, maybe in a gender expression sort of way, maybe just in the career they pursued or the people they were allowed to hang out with. But either way, it no longer seems fair that anybody like you would be courageous enough to stand up against the rules that their grandparents and their parents set out for them. But it is not loving to tell people who they should be or how they should live. It is loving to accept them regardless. We are all so lucky to be alive and life is so short. And so if Queen Awake gets to spend her earthly time spreading hate and fearing the devil that she derived from some terribly old book that her pilgrim ancestors wanted to f then you have just as much of a right to spend your life spreading love and living with courage in a way that inspires other people to challenge their perception of what is right and what is wrong because there is nothing wrong with being trans or queer or non-binary or having wide shoulders or getting married to Shrek and letting him eat your out in a swamp, as she did. You're not hurting anybody, unless you're getting up on a soapbox and telling the uneducated masses that they need to gang up and harass anybody who doesn't believe in having a Shreky swamp like them. You don't have to understand other people, but you do have to let them live their life. May Shrek eat your p then you say, and may he also eat yours. May he also eat yours. Very good. Amen. Hail Satan. That's where I'm going to end today's video. This was a very emotional one because I feel like my emotions are very raw surrounding the transgender bathroom issue, the anti-trans laws that affect children and people of all ages in this country. It is just so backwards and not the goddamn ticket. It, it baffles me the way that religious doctrine has been used as an excuse to pass oppressive laws in this land of the free. Where? Where's the freedom? Where's the equality? Because I just see white people, cisgender people, heteronormative society, keeping everybody else in their place with gerrymandering and bureaucracy and red tape that prevents any actual progress from happening. So fuck you you, Queen Awake, and your goddamn horrible username. That's bad branding. You're bad branding. Your brand is Shrek.
be bad. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up <laughs> if you don't want, if you do or do not want Shrek eating your and most importantly, click that subscribe button. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week and turn on notifications. That way you're always the first one to know when I'm up in the swamp with Shrek up in my also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus episodes and virtual watch parties. Tune in this weekend. We are watching a To Be Determined movie that my patrons are voting on right now. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for reading my clavicle bones and telling me who I ought to be. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time. Fuck.